most of them devoted for generations. That's a lot of land, and a lot of grass. It takes a lot to raise the meat supply for all Canada, and it takes time, too. Time for grazing the grass through the warm months and for eating it as hay down near the ranch buildings when the snow sets in. To people, time and grass probably don't seem too important, but on the range and pasture lands, they are. Here, time and grass set their own pace which the stock follow as they graze along, slowly consuming the sea of grass to produce a harvest of meat. To the herdsman camped out, the pace is as familiar as the voices around him. So too for the cowboy. But finally a day comes when the tempo of the range is over. The decision has been made to sell and livestock are on the move in numbers that reflect the true vastness of the grasslands. Every year, about 900,000 lambs and 4 million cattle move to market. Some are already at market weight, while others require further feeding. Most cattle leave the range today as calves and yearlings to go to centers that specialize in feeding them to add further weight and quality. A big commercial feed yard handles thousands of head of cattle a year, and it's a highly scientific factory providing high energy rations, balanced with proteins, vitamins, and minerals. On this diet, cattle can gain better than two pounds a day and soon reach market weight, around 1,000 pounds. Specialized feeder operations are not only efficient, they also produce meat of more uniform quality and better finish, which is in growing demand today. This increasing demand for better finished beef has also led individual farms to specialize in livestock feeding, often growing their own grain, adding supplements, and feeding from a few to several hundred head a year. Specialization in feeding has brought a need for scientific feeds and new mills to supply them. Canadian livestock consumes millions of tons of grain a year. Such mills provide mixed feeds by the bag and by the truckload. Hogs are raised almost entirely on grain, as many as eight million of them a year, almost one-third of Canada's meat supply. The trend is towards scientific feeding on a large scale, which produces a leaner meat-type hog. Lambs can be brought to top finish on grass alone, but commercial feeding is used to bring them to market weight more quickly. Whatever the livestock, the day comes when the producer decides to sell. He has a choice of several methods of marketing. He may sell directly to the meat packer, either at the plant or through a buying station, where prices are posted daily. The advantage of the buying station is that the producer can sell his livestock near his farm, thus minimizing weight loss and avoiding long-distance shipping. Direct selling is common in some parts of the country, but a farmer may sell through a commission agent at the public stockyards or through a cooperative agency. In Ontario, for instance, hog marketing is done through a long-distance auction using modern communication methods. Notice of hogs received at each local collection point is immediately given to the central marketing agency. That's Chatsworth 1, 158 hogs. Lot 2161. Those saws will have to be sold separately, Ivan. We'll make that lot number three. If you'll hold the line, I'll put them through right now. Thank you. The hog receipts from each assembly yard are tabulated on a board in a central office where they can be seen at a glance. The numbers and the prices of animals sold over a period of two weeks are also listed so that market trends can be observed. Prices paid are based on rigid grade standards for quality. Hogs are offered to buyers by teletype. The offering price for each lot starts above the current market level. 
but usually declines until a buyer bids or the lot is withdrawn. The interested buyer bids or waits for a lower price depending on the needs of his own plant. He registers his bid by the touch of a button. The offering message stops immediately and moments later confirmation of the sale is received. So another lot of hogs is on its way to the packing plant. But the wheels of the industry cannot begin to turn until the individual farmer makes his own decision to sell. Prices generally work strong to 50 cents higher. George, that heifer market sounds pretty good. Maybe we should start up a load of heifers and have them on the market tomorrow. Well, it might be okay. The farmers are in the field planting corn now, and they're not thinking of sending any cattle in. What do you think of calling our commission man and asking him what he thinks about it? That'd probably be okay. Thus, the choice is made. There are many factors which determine prices and methods of marketing. Farm papers, newsletters, Department of Agriculture bulletins, and personal experience all give the producer information he needs in order to market his livestock to the best advantage. He may choose a public stockyard in St. Boniface, Toronto, or Calgary, or any one of a number of other markets. Every day, around the clock, trucks and railroad cars roll up to the loading docks of the big stockyards. The trucks may carry a couple of animals, a couple of dozen, or they may be double-deckers that can hold 200 lambs or 40 steers. Majestically, the big trailers move in. At the dock, each shipment is checked in and counted. Then the animals are moved off to the pens of the commission firms to which they have been consigned to await the call of the auctioneer. The stockyard is an enormous livestock hotel. Pens are assigned to commission firms who are responsible for the well-being of the animals until they are sold. Here at Calgary, in the heart of the beef country, 7,000 head of cattle may come in during a busy week. Once the livestock reach the pens, the commission firm orders the feed they need to put on their best appearance for the day's buy. Meanwhile, the buyers for the packing companies, which will be competing for the livestock offered, estimate what they can bid in the light of the day's prices for meat. Opening receipts are about in line with a week ago. Grain-fed steers have been selling freely at strong prices, and I can't see any reason for this market to weaken. Do you have any ideas uh, along that line, Jim? No, selling was steady at the close of last week's business on good steers. In fact, there are indications Friday of strength creeping into the market. This being the case, I'll go along with a fully steady market on brandable steers this week. Uh, then, as I understand it, both you men feel that this strong market will carry on throughout the week. That is correct, Mr. Jeffries. Unless the stockyard should have extra heavy receipts the balance of this week, in which case the picture might change. But that's not liable to be the case based on receipts the past few weeks. I'll go along with that. Do you fellows have any questions? No. 
No, I don't think so, Joe. I'll be in touch with you, Jim, after the market opens. Okay, gentlemen. Twenty-five and a half and six there. Eight, six, six, seventy-five, six, six and a bear. Twenty-five, seventy-five, when he goes six, six and a bear, six. Twenty-five, seventy-five, and one of the six, six and a bear. Twenty-five, seventy-five, when he goes six, six and a bear, with only eighty-five, six, six and a bear. Twenty-five, eighty-five, when he goes six, six. Twenty-five, eighty-five, and one of the six, six and a bear, with only twenty-five, eighty-five, six, 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 one of the six, six and a bear, with only twenty-five, eighty-five, twenty-six, six, one of the six, six and a bear, six, six, one of the six and a bear, six, five, eighty-five. Pennies count when a sale is closed, for the earnings of meat packers are among the lowest of any major industry, less than a cent on the dollar. Packers are competing to buy livestock, but they're also competing to sell meat. When a packer buys, he has to consider what he can get for every last part of an animal. And so accurate weighing of the livestock becomes an important matter. The skilled hand of the weighmaster and carefully inspected scales ensure complete accuracy. How many more do you see there? Two more, there's about 17 heads up. When the livestock leave the scales, they become the property of the buyer and move on to the plant. Beef is dressed and hung in the cooler from 12 to 48 hours. Its temperature is gradually reduced to a few degrees above freezing. This temperature is maintained, although the meat may travel hundreds of miles before it reaches a market. Throughout processing, Inspectors of the Department of Agriculture examine the carcasses for cleanliness and wholesomeness, and their final stamp of approval on any meat assures the public that high standards have been maintained. Then the meat is graded for quality and type. Beef that meets the packer's own specifications receives his brand with a roller stamp. Now the meat is selected and tagged for shipment. A final check is often made by cutting between the 11th and 12th ribs so that the meat can be examined for quality and texture. Veal is handled in a similar manner, except that the hide is usually left on until just before shipping to preserve the meat's delicate color and flavor. Lamb is left whole, but sometimes shipped in primal cuts. This is the traditional way in which all meat has left the packing plant in the past. But today, with a quarter of Canada's meals consumed away from home, preparing portion cuts has become part of the packing business too. Cuts for restaurants and railroads, airlines and steamship companies. Unlike any other meat, pork is sold almost entirely on the basis of wholesale cuts and preparing them is a highly skilled operation. There are hams, of course, and loins and bacon and picnics. These, in turn, are made into over a hundred retail cuts, including chops, spare ribs and ham hocks. For of all the livestock, Hogs have the highest yield in meat and meat products, about 75% as compared with about 55% for beef and less than 50% for lamb. 
Preparing all these cuts is not a matter of skill alone, for skill implies proper tools to work with. In the case of pork, this means razor-sharp knives, curved and shaped to remove each specific cut. It means cleanliness too, as cut after cut is removed. Many pork cuts are cured, like bacon, which is automatically infused with a curing solution. Curing also means smoke, 15 to 24 hours over hardwood fires to bring out that real flavor of bacon, and even longer for hams. Then the cutting continues as bacon is sliced and separated into one pound portions. Most operations in the meat packing business require a skillful and experienced hand as no two animals are really quite the same. But there are also many operations that machines perform most efficiently. For example, the production of almost 140 million yards of frankfurters eaten by Canadians every year and table-ready meats of uniform quality and thickness. Mechanization widens the scope of the industry by producing smoked meats and sausages of all shapes and sizes. But the packing industry provides more than meats. Its research laboratories have discovered a wide variety of useful products that give added value to livestock. Lard and shortening find their way into bread and cakes and pastries. Animal oils are the basis of many cosmetics. Hides are carefully saved and sold to tanners and animal fats find use in soaps and detergents. Animal fibers string musical instruments and provide ever-changing adornment in the changeless form of wool, which takes on softer beauty in the glow of tallow candles. Still other byproducts form the basis of many industrial products, such as adhesives that find increasing use in laminated structures. More far-reaching still are the medical aids which byproducts provide. But the packer's main business is meat. Buying livestock all across the country and processing it is a big job, and an even bigger job is moving the meat and selling it. This is where the race with time begins, where the tempo really picks up. Perishability sets the pace in the industry. From this point on, the meat must be sold and delivered within a few days. Getting the right quality and weight and type to meet the specific demands of thousands of wholesale and retail outlets all over the country quickly is one of the great tasks of the packers. A refrigerator car slowly moves off along a spur to become part of a mainline train. Where is it headed for? Who wants what it's got? A truck pulls out from a packing plant with 15 tons of meat. Who wants it? A salesman somewhere knows the answer. Every week, thousands of refrigerator trucks and cars move meat from packers to consumers. That's a lot of meat, and it takes a lot of selling. It also takes canny judgment and good bargaining. This is the sample of the carload of lambs I was talking about, and pretty representative sample. What do you think of them? Well, they look pretty good uh, from what I've seen. But there are a few that are a little bit fat. Well, frankly, Mark, price-wise, I've gone as far as I can go. Well, I suppose you have. But if you split that, that last 50 cents in half, you take a quarter, I give a quarter. Are you talking on the whole car load? The straight car. All right, you own them now. A lot of sales are made right out of the cooler. But in this fast-moving business, the telephone is often quicker for buyer and salesman. <laughs> well, after all, I mean, all, you, all you're giving me is what, what? All I'm trying to do is get an order for a carload of meat. <laughs>
Well, I sure don't like the sound of your market. We have a lot of meat to move. All right, I'll put it in. I don't think it'll do any business, but we'll quote it anyhow. Who knows? And feel that making shipment of this type only detrimental to our business. Stop. Uh, I think we're going to have to uh, be a little lower than we've been. All right. We'll talk to him about uh, the pork loins and also about the pork livers, too. Okay? Good enough. I'd say the top of the market is seven. You might not be able to get it, but let's push for it. <laughs> Here we go again. All day long, the phones are busy, keeping the meat counters filled in a thousand towns and villages across the country. The salesman isn't through when he hangs up the phone. Buyers and retailers are having their problems, too, just about as many and as different from each other as there are meat counters in Canada. And these problems continually change the pattern of how meat is bought and sold and put on the road. Good morning, Gene. Mr. Cooper. A steak sale we have is going over a tremendous bag. I'm going to need some more lines. Can you help me out? Well, I'm going to need 25 to 30. Can you get those up to me in the morning? Fine. Along with that, I'd like two fifties of pork, two crates of chicken, and some bologna. Fifteen tons of meat on the road, and the problem at every turn. Well, I got hot weather here, and I got to cancel five of those trucks. Yeah, two more. Everybody's back from Labor Day, and they all want meat. A couple of cars came in on Friday. Got a good price on them. Well, maybe Moncton has one. If not, you could bring one in from Edmonton. Catch up with them where? Oh, fine. Well, I've got to have an extra 10 boxes of ribs this week. The barbecue season has really hit. Joe, we just can't use any more lamb in Quebec. The tourist season is just about over here. And so it goes. Just about everything that happens affects the retailer and what he can sell. Weather, holidays, and different preferences all over the country. It changes every day. How do you make sense out of it for a perishable commodity? How do you make quick sense out of it for distribution? Quick communication is part of the answer, reflecting immediately the change in demand across the country. Quick calculation is another part as these demands are processed and translated into specific shipping requirements for each packing plant. What it should ship, and where, and how, and when. So the routes of thousands of refrigerator cars and trucks make sense, spread out across the country toward the consumer. Across the prairies and the mountains, along the banks of the seaway, and through coastal villages, trucks and trains carry meat to individual retailers and chain stores. But the problems are not all solved. I know it's not there yet. There's a rock slide near Kamloops, and we had to reroute. Well, that storm's got trucks jackknifed all along there. Most of them are going to be delayed. I heard an hour ago he had a flat, but he's moving now. And the meat does keep moving. A consumer can walk into any market in the country, and the meat will be there in abundance and variety, fresh, wholesome and appetizing, an important source of high quality proteins. She'll buy or not buy as she chooses, and what she chooses turns the wheels of this industry all along the line, from the farms and ranches, to the packing plants, to the retailers. It turns them fast and in competition to deliver what she wants, when and where she wants it. And so the trains and the trucks still move. It's only a matter of time and grass and the tempo of the two. But now the pace is fast. Now it's time and highways. It's the tempo of these two. And a customer somewhere at the other end of the line.